It's exciting, isn't it? Sunday morning, right here at uh, Northern Novice. You're welcome to church. I hope um, the traffic wasn't too much for you on your way to TV church, isn't it? Okay. God bless you. Let's share a word of prayer together. Father, thank you so much for your love and your kindness. Speak to our hearts again and again. In Jesus' name, amen. We're looking at anointing, isn't it? Um, and... Um, Anointing is my, my favorite topic when it comes to ministry because you, 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 can't, you can't function. You can't do well. Not even do well. You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't be in the ministry without anointing. You, you, you will. You try. Now you see that after 12 years in ministry, you wouldn't have things to show that you are in secondary school, uh, 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 grade, grade 7 or 8. You see how a human being grows up 10, 11, 12, 13, the mental faculty, the physical features and all of that. If you are not anointed, you see that you can have a ministry, you can have a church. And after 12 years, it's just, it, it will just be talk. It will just be talk. It will just be Facebook pictures that you can't show us everything. Now, many of us, when we are taking, we show pictures from our, our church. We don't show the whole church. Why? Because you, 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 see, you, don't, you don't want to show some nakedness. Do you understand? The nakedness is what, what I'm talking about. The, the, the feeling of that nakedness is what God's presence, that's God's power, that's God's anointing can do. All of us are not anointed. I, I'm telling you, not all ministers, not all apostles, not all prophets, not, 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 all the, not everybody is anointed. No, 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 at all. At all. Don't be deceived. And that's why I think this is a very important topic to share, to teach on, so that we, 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 we get abreast with what, what, what really... Ministry is not certificate. You see, if you're going to teach, if you're going to go to uh, uh, teach at um, one of these secondary schools, you need a certificate for uh, Sir Porter's College of Education. Must. If you don't have it, you'll be pushed, you'll be forced to get it within a certain time frame. If, if you're going to look for a job, you write your, your CV, your resume... This, 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 you have to show, I don't know whether you get a job without showing your certificate, but I'm sure many people uh, get through with a job without a certificate. But, but in, the, in the real world, <laughs> after your CV, you have to go to the interview with hard copies of your certificate. That which proves what you have acquired on the CV. You get it? If you're going to operate a bobcat or excavator, you go with your, your, your certificate. I mean, not that, you know, you have a bobcat at home and you, you and you find and then you, no. I mean... You know, you know how it works. In, in a real world, you need to put down your paper before you qualify for something. In, in, in the real ministry also, you need oil. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost, it, the Bible is teaching us what he was anointed with. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing, doing good. The, the, the works, the things you are able to do is because of anointing of the Holy Ghost and power. Are you with me? And so we're looking at the anointed and his anointing. And one of the things you have to understand is that anointing is in an anointed person. Like, let's say, if I'm anointed. I believe I'm anointed. Maybe not, not a lot, but, you know, I mean, small anointing. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that to offend God. I believe that I'm anointed. You get it? Now, what you are able to do, to stand, to stand here in this church, on TV, social media, whatever it is, 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 is something called anointing. The Apostle Paul said, uh, I have been given grace as a master builder. That, that, that grace it's anointing. And so, you need anointing. I need more anointing. Oh, yes. I, I want to drink anointing until I die. Because 
that is what makes you relevant. That's what makes you makes you significant. That is the stamp and the seal of God upon your life and ministry. It's not it's, it's not your title. Titles, tell it, you can have the greatest title, but without oil. Have you someone who's dressed, someone who has bath and all that, and they don't have cream on their on their face? You've not seen some before. I'm telling you, everything done, but there's no cream, there's no face powder, there's nothing. If you don't have anointing, it's like you've dressed up, you go to the shop to buy clothes, shoes, and then your, your, your face is dry. The balm of Gilead is not in your life. Are you with me? So if Jesus was anointed, that means that Jesus was a carrier of anointing. Elijah asked Elijah, give me a double portion of your anointing. It means that Elijah was carrying anointing. And so I'm talking about the anointed and his anointing. The orange and its juice. The apple and its juice. The five finger and its juice. The Maserati and the engine inside. The Bugatti and the engine that drives it. Are, 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 are you with me? <laughs> the country and what makes it great. America, they say it's great. But what makes America great? It's a place you're free to do anything you want to do. <laughs> I mean, as, as early as this morning, 6, 7 o'clock, you see uh, some people with uniform on the road stopping. <laughs> I mean, I mean, 6 o'clock, you gotta be, you got to be kidding me. Is somebody, has somebody left, they left the jail? Is somebody going around stealing people? You, you, no, you, you, land of the, so home of, land of the world, home of the brave, land of the free. That's why even uh, President Trump, who saw a few, uh, uh, a few, what, a few, I got it, states are trying to remove him from their ballot ballot that's about three states he's still sweeping the gop uh, nomination i mean i mean <laughs> it's like unanimous the republicans are presenting him whether he's on your ballot in your country or not i think that you see with all those things that they are doing god is going to show america something that the country was built on on god on, with god that somebody who is not on, i don't know whether they will bring him back on the ballot but if they don't bring him back on the ballot and he wins the presidency it'll be historic uh, uh, he's coming back on the ballot. Okay. Even if, if, if he's not coming back on the ballot, I believe that he it will be history for people to see that this thing is God. Uh, I'm not saying that Mr. Trump is anointed. I, I know I wasn't there whether he was or not, but I'm just saying something. You get it. And so that's what the anointed and his anointed. The person who brings first in class and his brain yeah. or her brain. What makes somebody, you go and sit down, you all write the exam, and then he gets 12 distinctions. There's something in the head. There's something that the brain is not big, <laughs> it's not small, but there's something. Have you, have you, shall we, did you experience that in school? I mean, you, you do your best. You see that you, you brought 18th. And then this guy who you don't really think much about, who you don't really respect, who when he asks you for your pencil, you say, hey, brother, I remove from in front of me. He brings first. Are you watching? And so, what? No, no. <laughs> There's, there's something up on the guy's life. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody starts ministry, you don't respect the person, but the person is able to do certain things. I'm telling you, the anointed and his anointing. And so my, 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 my topic this morning, I started last week, is how to identify anointed people. If somebody is anointed like Jesus, if somebody is anointed like Elijah, if somebody is anointed like Elisha, how do you identify an anointed person? If, if, if the mango is ready to be picked, how, how do you know? If the banana is ready to be cut, how, how do you know? Because many people don't know. You see banana on a, a banana tree and then you say, oh, so can I cut it now? Is it ready? No. People who are, are into farming, they don't know when and when. When can I pick up the pine? Do you get it? The anointed and his... How do you identify anointed people? The first way of identification is to identify the anointed by the criteria of Jesus Christ, always, always, always. What Jesus says is always uh, what we must always go for. And so Jesus' criteria of, anoint, of an anointed person is what we should look at. Not my criteria, not anybody's criteria. The book of the Lord, the holy book's criteria, according to Jesus, that's what we should look at. And so in uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 18 and 19, and then 22 and 23, in the New Living Translation, the Bible says the disciples of John the Baptist told Jesus about everything Jesus was doing. So John called for two of his disciples, and he sent them to the Lord to ask him, Are you the anointed we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? Are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep um, looking for someone else? Then Jesus answering said unto them, He said, Go your way, or go back, 
and tell John what things you have seen. Why is Jesus not telling them? Go and tell John that, yes, I am the Messiah. I am the anointed one. It's not by talk. I said, it's not by talk. You like talk. It's not by shouting. It's not by spitting in the microphone. It's not by uh, get, getting hoarse after preaching. He says, what, what, what? Then said, Jesus answered said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. To the poor, the gospel is preached. And he says, And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Look, look at the criteria. Look at the criteria. John the Baptist asked for the Messiah. And then Jesus said, you want to know the Messiah? Messengers, go and tell John what you are seeing. Isn't it? Go and tell John what you are seeing. <laughs> what are you seeing? He said, the lame is walking, the deaf is hearing, the dead is being raised. It's like the anointing makes you do things. And the things that are being done is what makes you identify anointing. Are, are you with me? And so, Jesus' criteria is, if, do you want to know if uh, uh, um, uh, Mika is anointed? Watch, the, watch her works. Is Shawin anointed? Watch what he's doing. Is Zerina anointed? Watch what she's doing. Is Bishop Collins anointed? Watch what he's doing. If he has things on the ground. You, you, so, I don't, if you ask me, are you anointed? I, I can't answer that. I'll, I'll, I'll answer the way Jesus said he said, okay, look at what is happening. Go and tell John what you are seeing. Go and tell the people who are questioning the anointing of my life what you are seeing. That's, that's all. If you can identify something happening, if you can see this. For example, we are, we are in a beautiful country. Ghana is a very beautiful country, very nice country. If you want to know whether the, the leadership is good, it's not how the person looks. It's not how he talks. It's look at the road. Look at the sand trucks. Look at the things that are going on. That is the sign of the person at the helm of affairs. And if it's bad things happen, if there's crime, people are shooting people, killing people, then you know the person who is leading. If the human being walking doesn't have clothes on, then you know what is in the head. You know what is working. Well, the person, the cranking amps. <laughs> you know cranking amps? <laughs> I'll show you, tell you. <laughs> People are controlled by something. It's either the spirit of God or the spirit of the devil. Either some good skills or some gift or talent. And you see that by what is on the ground. Not that you are 15 years in ministry, but you don't have anything to show for. Not that you are 20 years in ministry, and then you want everybody to bring their church members to your anniversary so that the place will, be, will swell. And then you take pictures and say, we had a great anniversary, but when everybody goes back, you have 25 people. And 25 years of 25 people. I mean, come on. The Bible says your latter shall be greater than your former. And so, uh, not despising numbers or anything, but uh, the longer you stay, the better it gets. Is that not what it is? The older you, 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 you grow, the more wise wisdom and the more experience you gather. Are you with me? The second point is that you identify the anointed by the sign of doing unusual things with ease. Identify the anointed by... The sign of doing unusual things with ease. Look at John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Mr. Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. It means he wasn't ignorant. <laughs> the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know, we know, is all we believe. We know, we know. There's a knowing that has, that has sunk into our minds and our spirits. That you are a teacher from, come from, who has come from God. We know that. We know. How, how do we know? For no man can make this, this juice cannot come out of this orange if it's not ripe. Hey there. This car cannot drive so fast if the engine is not strong and, and great and big. You, you, you can't take your 192 and race on South Dakota circuit. <laughs> Are you listening to me? 
when you go to South Dakota circuit, at, at the back of Church Jaga International Airport, for those in Guyana, so maybe if you're in Region 8, you may probably not know South Dakota, but we have a racing circuit. You don't go and race with 192 Toyota Corolla. You don't race with a, a sound track on the South Dakota circuit. <laughs> they, they, even the guys who race here in the country, they, they, they actually, <laughs> they build, they, they, they make their vehicles because a racing car must be very low, very low. I mean, it must be touching the ground. Why? Because the center of gravity must be so low, or I don't know, it's low or high. I, I learned in physics, I forgot it. Such that if you are turning, you are making a turn, if it's high, if the vehicle is high, it can topple. So the, 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 that's why racing cars are so low. So when they turn, whoo, they are still on the ground. <laughs> you get it? You can't race with 182. You can't race with a, 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 a what? A 212. You can't race with, with a soundtrack. You can't even race with your fancy car. You know, you, there's a type. Now, and so the, the ease, the ease of what somebody does is a sign of what is upon the person. Are you with me? Some preachers, they preach, you don't understand. I hope you understand what I'm preaching about. You get it? The ease in people understanding what you are teaching or you what you are preaching is what makes you anointed. It's, it's not a complication. It's not the words. It's not the uh, 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 terminology. It is the ease with which somebody is able to explain a scripture for you to understand. That is anointing. Are you with me? Nicodemus came and he said, nobody can do these things that thou doest except God be with him. In 2 Kings 2, verse 12, Elijah coming back from seeing Elijah off at the airport to heaven. The Boeing 747. This was a private jet, really. Elisha picked up Elijah, Elijah's coat or cloak. 2 Kings 2, verse 12. Which had fallen when he was taken up. Then Elisha returned to the bank of the Jordan River. He struck the water with Elijah's cloak and cried. He cried out, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Where is the Lord, God of Elijah? Then the river divided, and Elijah went across. When a group of prophets from Jericho saw from a distance what happened, they exclaimed, Elijah's spirit rests upon Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. They said, hey, to take your jacket off. But you take my jacket off. And then the Demerara River opens for you to walk. Hey, the, the guy is anointed. <laughs> Please take your jacket when you get to the, when you are going to the west side. In Guyana, where you go from Georgetown. When you, go to, uh, 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 when you go to Harbor Bridge, just park your car. Don't pay to park your car. Then go out, take your, 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 your top, and then touch the Demerara Harbor uh, River with it. If it parts, it means you have something. Amen. Wonderful. So that's all uh, uh, time has for us this morning. Um, I, I pray you, 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 you identify anointed people because the identification will help you relate with a person. If you can't identify, you can't find, you can't relate, and you cannot be anointed. And then your ministry will not be fruitful. I hope you are following the sequence. If you can't identify, you can't locate, you can't relate, you can't catch the anointing, and you cannot do ministry successfully. I pray that the Lord open your eyes to lo locate anointed people right here in Guyana. Anointed people that who are not far from you, who you can relate with, who you can catch what is upon their lives, who you can uh, 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 siphon or, or, or suck or draw anointing from so that your life and ministry will become very fruitful. Father, thank you for speaking to us. I thank you for eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are not saved. You are not born again. You want to say, Bishop, please pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want you to pray this prayer with me. There's only one way to heaven. There's only one way. If you want to go to heaven, there's only one way. There are not three entries. There's only one. I mean, there's no, if, if you want to fly uh, sometimes to a country, you have different airports. But heaven has one airport. One plane that takes you to heaven. Like Noah's Ark, only one door. And that door is Jesus Christ. You want to be saved? You want to have eternal life? Pray this prayer with me. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. I believe with all my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus lived and he died 
and then he rose again. And I received Jesus this morning to be my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, call that number on the screen. If you give your life to Christ, 691 You want the notes? You want the points uh, that I'm preaching from? That's right there, not a novice church. You have the QR code. I'm sure if you open your phone and you scan it, you get all the points. Um, but I'm, anyway, I'm also preaching from the book by Dagi Watme was the anointed and his anointing. It's also available online. You can look for it and get it. So when I'm preaching, you're looking into it, it becomes uh, easier. The anointed and his anointing by Dag Heward Mills. All right, it's time for offering. I like offering time. I like offering time. It's exciting. Offering time is very exciting. The Bible says that nobody should appear before the Lord empty-handed. I think it's Exodus chapter 25. Nobody should come before the Lord empty-handed. And so wherever you are seated watching, you are in the presence of the Lord. MMG number 6147909 or our bank account is right there. 313384 uh, Bank of Nova Scotia with the name right there. All right? Uh, take out your offering. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. God bless all those who give offering. Uh, some of you are very consistent. Every Sunday morning you give. May the Lord be consistent in your life in terms of blessings as well in the name of Jesus. Uh, give your offering. Tithe as well. Tithe as well. I believe it's very, very important to tithe. You tithe from where you eat from. The Bible says, bring you the tithes and offerings into my house, that there might be meat. There might be meat. Meat is something you eat. Food is something you eat. And so where you eat from, that's where you tithe to. All right? So if this is your church, not a novice, I want to encourage you, a tenth of your increase, every increase, just send it to us on the, on the information provided, 6147909. If you don't know what to do, just take one of the numbers, call, and say, I got me tight. I want to me tight. It will not a novice church, N-A-N church, okay? And those are the details. I believe God is going to bless you. Father, bless everyone who's given this morning. I pray for a prosperous week, uh, a favorable week. I pray that this will be a week that, Lord, you open eyes and you favor your people as they give. Thank you for the blessings that are bound as they give right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you for giving. I will see you next week right here again on Not a Novice.